This is the Lexus NX350 F Sport. And I'd like to say it has a twin turbo V6 with 550 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque, but it doesn't. I'd like to say it will go from standstill to 60 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds, but it won't. And I'd also like to say it'll pull 1G in the turns, but it won't do that either. What I can say though is it's a compact luxury crossover, which is the best seller in this category, and it won't leave you stranded on the side of the road thanks to Lexus's reputation for both quality and reliability. So the NX350 is likely to be the most popular choice among NX buyers. It's the best seller that Lexus currently makes. Now we did drive the Lexus 450H Plus a few months ago, which shares its platform with the Toyota RAV4 Prime, found it to be an absolute hoot. Now this one has a punchy turbo four engine. I'm gonna review it today. I'm gonna let you know exactly what I think. So the NX350 is a little bit longer than its predecessor. It's about 0.8 of an inch longer, it's 0.8 of an inch wider, and then the wheelbase is 2.2 inches longer, benefiting the interior space, particularly for the passengers. Now those stats actually are more relevant when you compare it to its German rivals, because it sort of sits in between the German cars, two distinct size vehicles. So the GLA, and the X1 and the Q3 are all smaller than this one, but the GLC and the X3 and the Q5 are all bigger than this. So it's something of a tweener. There's definitely no missing the Lexus full width spindle uh, grille here. It is very in your face, but fewer creases than the outgoing model. And then I like these LED lights here and then a couple of fake vents in the front. It is obviously a Lexus from the front. So at the back, it's completely redesigned. It's definitely a smoother look. Again, fewer sharp creases, Lexus written out in uh, full at the back there. That's the way they're going these days. And a couple of vents in the side and then NX350 with the all wheel drive badge drop below it. I think it looks awkward, but that's the way they've chosen to go. So because this is an F Sport, it gets these 20 inch black wheels. They look pretty cool. There's a lot of black around the vehicle, whether it be matte or piano black, it's all over the place. I think it's a good look with this particular dark looking color that I've got on this test car. It's got these Bridgestones, it's pretty standard on non-performance cars that Lexus sends over. Uh, they're not too bad, but on the limit, they tend to squeal a little bit. So maybe you should think about getting some slightly better ones, Contis or Michelins to replace them once these wear out. So on top of those 20 inch wheels and some black plastic trim on the exterior, you also get the F Sport seats, which are a little more comfortable, a bit more bolstering. And then of course, F Sport adaptive suspension, Eco Normal Sport and Sport Plus. Believe me, I've tried them all and the Goldilocks choice is Sport. Don't worry about going into the higher one. The engine just revs too much. It's got way too much torque. It's just not enjoyable. So stick it in Sport and then you can have some fun. So this one starts around 46.5. Out the door on this one is 55 because it's got quite a few extras on it. Uh, one of them being the Mark Levinson surround sound system, which is really good for $2,200. It's got a moonroof and a bunch of other bells and whistles on it to bring it up to that 55K. Even at 55, it's still cheaper than its German competition. So on this S-Sport, you get a powered tailgate, of course. And then in the back, you have quite a decent amount of room. So with the second row up, you get about 22.7 cubic feet of space. We also get this little luggage cover. And then inside here, you get some additional storage space for more stuff and some storage on this side as well. And a first aid kit. Put these seats down though, you get about 47, 48 cubic feet of space with those seats folded flat. So under the hood, there is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, good for 275 horsepower, 317 foot pounds of torque, which kicks in at a very low 1,700 RPM. Now this is all wheel drive. It's driven through an eight speed automatic transmission. More on what I think about that transmission later on. Driven as fast as you can, you can get from zero to 60 in about 6.6 .6 seconds. And if you don't do that, you'll get about 29 miles per gallon on highway 
with a light right foot. All right, well, settle yourself into these beautiful soft leather seats, and this is quite a decent place to be. The headroom is a little restricted due to the sloping sort of crossover shape. I have an okay amount of leg room. For me, the seat is quite a long way back. Speakers for the Mark Levinson surround sound system, you've got your AC, HVAC vents, two sets of power, and a 12 volt. And I could see myself spending a little bit of time. You've got a nice big sunroof here. Again, not my favorite, but it's got one, so that's what you get. No complaints from me in the front. Um, these front seats mimic the rear ones, only better. Super comfortable, super soft leather. Two nice, decent cup holders here. A wireless charger that holds my phone and it charges through my case, which is great. This one's got the head-up display as well, memory seats, heated and cooled seats as well on both sides. And it's got a little bit of storage space, and I love this fact that you can open it from both sides. Well, I really can't fault the quality of the interior and really like this, this new 14-inch um, entertainment screen that you get. It's really quite easy to use. It's pretty fast. You can go through the various different menus or will drive system trip information, driving assist, etc. You've got some settings in here you can go into. You can set up a profile for each person. Uh, you can choose all your resources for music, put your phone on, Amazon, Apple, etc. It's nice. It works really well. Climate control is easy to use as well. I really like these little twisty knobs here on both sides obviously you can sync if you need to and then cool the air we'll put it down to 70 it's kind of a warm day today and then view safety camera pretty cool goes all the way around the car and make sure there's no bad people anywhere near you and it zooms up and over the top of the car pretty cool stuff and then further down, you've got the, uh, this really big button for your suspension control system, so you can spin it into Sport S, my preferred. Sport S Plus, not really. It rides a little bit too hard for me. Uh, so you can toggle between those two, and it shows you on the screen, or you can go back into normal, uh, or you can go into eco drive mode, where it's extremely reluctant to, to change down almost ever. And then right below that, you've got a little bit of space for storage, a couple of little USB power outlets. There's your wireless charger, two decent cup holders, as I mentioned. There's the little stubby gear shifter. Uh, you've got a hold button, you've got park, you've got traction control off. You've got into the woods you go off-road mode. It doesn't really have a lot of clearance, so don't get too crazy. Hill descent control, again, don't get too crazy there. And then your stop-start off button. So if you want to view a more detailed interior review of this car, check out my video on the Lexus 450H Plus. I go into a little bit more detail, but right now we need to know how this car drives and whether that 275 horsepower, 317 foot-pounds of torque makes this a good car. So let's get going. All right, I'll just get off this dirt section that we're on really do like the uh, the HD high resolution cameras that this has very good quality now as I said it does run these Bridgestone all season so you're not going to expect 1G on the skid pan by a long way but let's go see how it will drive so I'm going to knock it into my favorite Sport S mode not S plus telling you if you try S plus you won't be in it for long it's just a little crashy and not great anyway we're going uphill we'll give it a break so one thing it's a little noisy I mean four-cylinder engines can be noisy uh, this one's a little noisier than I would have expected just because it's a Lexus the same thing with the sort of the Audi or the BMW four-cylinders uh, they're a little smoother, just a little smoother than this engine. It's a good engine, it's got plenty of power, more power than actually most of its rivals. But there is one thing that lets it down that I, that I mentioned earlier, and that is the transmission. Uh, probably done on purpose by Lexus, but it's somewhat lazy. I reckon if this had a twin clutch transmission, 
dual clutch transmission, it would shave at least half a second or more off its zero to 60 time. That's, that's its biggest letdown. But having said that, the majority of Lex, Lexus buyers who buy the NX are simply not going to care. Now, handling wise, it's a pretty tidy handler. It's not going to mimic the BMWs and the Audis of this world, but it's not bad. And it feels tight and it feels solid and I haven't heard any rattles or, or anything like that so far. So I'm kind of happy with the way this drives. All right, so now you can feel that that transmission just does not shift as quick as it could. And it would be a simple, you don't even need to, actually you really don't need a twin clutch uh, transmission on this car, just reprogram the transmission that it's got. A conventional eight speed automatic can be made to shift l at lightning speeds. Look at the BMW automatic transmissions, they're great. Anyway, on to handling wise, Take the Bridgestones out of the equation and it handles nicely. You go into the turn, the steering feels good. There's a little bit of a squeal from the Bridgestones as they fight from, for grip. It's the kind of car that you'd want to drive seven to eight tenths, but try and get it, force it any higher than that. And you find that it's less of a fun drive. One thing that is really good are the brakes. They have a great pedal feel. They stop this car really well. They feel smooth, plenty of power. I like the brakes. So really, the, yeah, I mean, honestly, there isn't a lot that I can complain about. The transmission is its biggest fault, but I'm probably one of the few people that would actually complain about it. And clearly, Lexus is not gonna be bothered to reprogram it because I think it's a good idea. So yeah, engine's a bit buzzy, but it's got lots of torque. And uh, if you put it back into normal mode, it is a little bit more reluctant to change gear, but you can ride that wave of torque and get some really good gas mileage. This would be a super comfortable little car on a, on a long trip, for example. I like the feedback that you get from the steering. I like the feedback from the suspension. It's, it's soft enough to absorb these bumps but it's capable enough to take the, these turns at, at a fun, higher speed. So far, it doesn't want to understeer. And I feel like it ultimately will, but it'll take a lot. More than I am possibly want to try. But it's definitely, uh, it doesn't feel like it wants to plow straight. I'm taking these bends pretty quick. So we're not really gonna take this on a really long run today. I mean, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a super quick car, but gosh, I'm really enjoying the steering. Very direct too. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with this car. Okay, so what do we think? Well, the Lexus NX350 is somewhat of a cash cow for Lexus. It's their biggest seller. And I think it's a great little car. It's reliable. Uh, obviously, it's got the Lexus badge, so it's got that luxury appeal. It can't keep up with the Germans. It's not trying to mimic the Germans. And then another thing, Lexus has really been careful about this redesign so as not to upset their very loyal client base. It's a beautifully made car. It drives perfectly. It can be economical if you don't have a heavy right foot like I do. And uh, you know, I really like it. I think it's definitely worth uh, at least going for a test drive in this NX350 gas only Lexus. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time with another video.